Hello, I'm Camila Freitas. I'm the director of Landless. I'm very honored to present it at the CADOX selection of 2021. Um, besides the pandemic uh, in Brazil, as you might know, we've been enduring a very hard political moments under a far right government that has been destroying and attacking every cultural policy for art and film, and as well as pursuing landless workers, indigenous and Quilombola people more than ever. So I'd like, first of all, to highlight the importance of this opportunity and of every window that opens to discuss the land issue and inequality through art, which we try to do through this film. The film premiered at the Berlin Alley in 2019 at the Forum section and has been to several national and international festivals since then. But because of COVID-19, only now it will be commercially released in Brazil at the same time as Cadox. So we are very happy to talk about it at this very moment. Landless is about a collective dream, a dream of a less in unequal country in which land is shared among all its inhabitants, in which peasant and family agriculture is respected and supported, in which healthy food production and good living conditions are guaranteed for all. Unfortunately, in a country like ours, the land issue is a structural deadlock and one of the slowest processes in our colonial history, an impasse, a deep and living wound that renews itself with more cruel faces at every moment. I realized in making this film that the struggle is long term and goes beyond a unique territory or time frame since the very idea of land reform has been rejected and neglected over and over, and most of the land still remains in the hands of very few. Even though land reform is a right guaranteed in the 1988 Constitution, no land would ever have been redistributed without a lot of struggle and pressure, no matter how the governments are politically oriented. And the main character in that struggle is the landless workers' movement, the major peasant movement in Brazil and one of the most organized movements, popular movements in the world. They have been around since 1984 and have been a key element in the Brazilian political landscape since then, gathering around 1.5 million people in 23 of the 26 states we have in Brazil. Needless to say, its sole existence represents a great threat to the established power which is in Brazil closely connected to land ownership. Why would the 1% of the population that owns almost half of the farmland be tolerant of a movement that helps people organize and stand up against inequality, monocultures, agrotoxins and food insecurity? That's what our film is about and we focus on a group that has been occupying since 2015 the land of an indebted sugarcane mill in bankruptcy process in the south of Goiás, a region dominated by agribusiness for the production of commodities. We follow Grandma, PC, Bento, Vitoria and their encamped fellows in their everyday life, resisting and reinventing themselves 
as they reinvent this devastated land and turn it into a refuge of agroecological production and political emancipation surrounded of sugarcane from side to side, a place of active hope from where collective fabulation and narrative emerge. A land occupation, because of this overlapping of opposite modes of existence, is not and cannot be at peaceful, a peaceful place, since the permanence of people in that space itself revolves the land from inside out, bringing to light historical injustices in class, gender and race prejudices rooted in coloniality. I tried to seek, especially through camera and sound work, an identification of the filmic form with the landscape state with the landscape's standpoint, a landscape that was a thousand times expropriated by hegemonical power and is now reappropriated by the workers, defying a whole political and judicial system designed to maintain power structures intact. Landless was made over the period of four years through a complex and intense dive into the struggle of the movement in the state of Goiás. During that process, starting in 2014 and going up to 2018, the Brazilian political landscape changed a lot. That, of course, affected the film process and narrative, since I realized that trying to make it in a macro-political or historical tone would be an unachievable task. Also, for those who are surviving in a land occupation, living and struggling are totally mixed, which motivated our decision to go beyond the epical tone of big land occupations or the militant tone uh, that many films uh, addressing that issue can take. Uh, we decided to dive into the dreams, the slow breathing of life connected to the growing of crops, the talks about the future, the emergency of a new community about, around a common dream, in short, the micro-political relations and the image of what is not seen, uh, which is there to oppose the usually distorted and dehumanizing image conveyed by the mainstream media and conservative sectors to compose the landscape of the struggle. At last, I would like to say that most of the people you will see on the screen are still resisting in, the, in that occupation and despite the sanitary crisis, they are still planting lots of organic food, uh, which the movement has been donating to urban peripheral families. I hope you enjoyed the screening and for those who are interested, you'll be of course more than welcome to join us in the special presentation about the film on March 13th and when we will be, be able to talk more deeply about the film in the presence of Juvan Rodriguez, uh, who is one of the members of the movement and part of the crew. Thanks for listening and have a good screening.
everybody, and welcome to KDOC's Film Festival 2021, Resistance, Freedom, Justice. I'm Jennifer Hardwick, a board member with KDOC's and a faculty member at Kwantlen Polytechnic University. I'm delighted to welcome you here tonight and to welcome our esteemed panelists, Fernando, Camila, Jivan, and Adriana. A few notes about tonight. We're gonna to be doing some translation back and forth between English and Portuguese. So conversation will occur in both languages. Additionally, we've had some technical and bandwidth challenges tonight because we have panelists coming from all over the world. So please bear with us if we have any technical difficulties. We're gonna be doing our best. I'm gonna turn now to our panelists who are gonna introduce themselves one by one and provide a brief statement to get us going. Thanks. Fernando, would you start? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Fernando, and uh, I'm administrative assistant for the Faculty of Arts at Conflict University and a former international student from Brazil. Uh, I've been living in Canada for three years now, and I was approached to be in this panel because between 2015 and 2017, I took part in uh, some political demonstrations in favor of the landless workers movement in Sao Paulo. And uh, I guess I'd like to give my modest perspective as a Brazilian citizen engaged in politics. Thank you for having me here, it's an honor. Hello. Camila? Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to be here with you at KDOX. Um, I'm so the, I'm the director uh, and also the, the one of the cinematographers and the co-producer of Shaun, the film we've just seen. Uh, well, um, we we're going through a very difficult moment in Brazil still, <laughs> uh, and so it's also always a, a a very important opportunity to be talking about uh, land reform and and the fight, the struggle for land uh, with people from other parts of the world. So thank you for having me and I'm very excited to hear what you have in mind about the film. Thank you, Jivan. Oi, Oi Jivan, é, agora é para você se apresentar, é, se dar uma introdução sobre você. Sobre o filme. Okay. Bom, eu sou Boa Noite, eu sou Gilvan Rodrigues, militante do Movimento Sem Terra no Brasil. Fernando, você vai fazendo a tradução simultânea ou posso ir falando? Uh, acho que você pode ir falando, depois, a gente, depois eu meio que dou uma sumarizada, o que você acha? Pode ser. Bom, sou Gil, Gilvan Rodrigues, militante do Movimento Sem Terra aqui no Brasil. Há, há mais de 20 anos estou nessa causa pela democratização da terra aqui no nosso país e acompanhei de perto a construção do, do filme Chão. E para mim é muito prazeroso estar nesses momentos porque... O que o chão retrata, eu também vivi no meu dia a dia quando estava vivendo em um acampamento. So, Juvan said that uh, he's been a militant for the Landless Workers Movement for more than 20 years, and he followed up close the making of the movie Chão. And uh, it's, it's, been very it's a very important documentary for him, uh, uh, giving uh, I guess the uh, political situation of Brazil right now. Did I miss something, Camila? Just kind of like a first check on my... Yes. Uh, yes. He's been a militant for 20 years. And um, he, he thinks it's... Uh, he followed the film very closely. So he, he's part of our crew. And... And uh, he, he, he lived same things that the film he was in an occupation. That's why the documentary is so important for him. Yes. Thank you. And Adriana. 
Good night, everyone. Um, I am Adriana Paz. I am originally uh, from Bolivia. I've been born and raised in Bolivia. And um, I've been living in Canada for 17 years, but I've been also coming and going everywhere, kind of like between North and South. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much um, to uh, for inviting me to the film. and. Um, I um, worked uh, in Canada mostly with um, migrant farm workers that come to Canada from Mexico, from Guatemala, from Central America, and from the Caribbean under the uh, guest workers program to um, feed uh, ourselves, to put food in our table. Uh, yet these peasants, these campesinos, are uh, campesinos, peasants that have been displaced in their own lands, in their own countries, and then they find themselves as migrant workers. So I've been very um, excited uh, to watch the film. Uh, I know the struggle of the landless movement because I am from Bolivia. We also have a landless movement in Bolivia, and it's been a major source of inspiration since I was a teenager. Um, so I will just leave it here for now and looking forward to the discussion. Thank you all. I'll get us started off tonight with a question about land. Land is obviously at the center of this film and there's a wonderful line in it about how land is power. And we can see movements for land across the globe right now uh, as folks strive to uh, find territories that they can live and work on. I'm wondering if the panelists can talk a little bit of, about the importance of land and why it is so central to resistance and justice right now. Can you pass it over from, to me, right? I didn't hear, yeah, okay. Absolutely, go for it. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, we, what, what's, um, motivated me uh, to, to make this film was always the thought that land, the land issue is one of the most important and the most neglected questions uh, that, that is kind of in the, in the base of everything, all the exclusion, all the inequality, everything is connected to land, the indigenous land and the colonial, um, wounds and I don't know how to say but uh, things that are uh, not resolved and that have never been resolved and faced in Brazil uh, and the, the, all the, the colonial evils like uh, esclavage or how, how to say that slavery uh, and everything is connected in the in, So uh, I guess that's facing it, that looking at uh, something that we're missing to do, that we have been missing to do uh, in our history. Uh, and that's uh, really like, it's, uh, it's so obvious that land is power when, when we look at our politicians and our political all the politicians have, uh, I, I mean, most of the politicians uh, we have are uh, landowners, big landowners, they are connected to landowning. And right now we are under a far right government, which is uh, strictly connected and that claims uh, their rights to, to exclusion, the, the right to even kill landless people. Uh, so that's uh, that's for us uh, the most urgent thing. I mean, I, I guess it's the the most urgent theme I could think of. Uh, in and of course we can talk about it in very different ways. And uh, the experience of the landless workers, special because they, they have been around for 37 years now and they, they are really moving things. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have any land redistribution in Brazil. 
and uh, only the processes that I've been following closely with the film, uh, they are really made up of very, very small victories. And so sometimes a lot of, a lot of uh, steps back to, uh, you know, to build things little by little. Yeah, so that, that's, that, that, that be the, the most, the most, yeah, the most important thing uh, to, to think of nowadays to me. Uh, maybe I could pass the, the word to Jouvan to talk about that much more quickly. Right? Oh, Jouvan, é, basicamente a gente está conversando sobre a, aquela sentença a Terra Poder é, e para dar sua opinião sobre a uh, desenvolvimento dos trabalhadores sem terra uh, no Brasil uh, uh, em projeção cenário atual. Porque é importante é, esse movimento, é, esse momento da história do Brasil. Ok. Bom, a... é, Diferente dos países centrais, no Brasil, países de economias centrais, no Brasil não se precisou fazer reforma agrária para o desenvolvimento do capitalismo. O capitalismo se desenvolve no Brasil ao mesmo tempo com a necessidade da concentração de terras. Então, a reforma agrária e movimentos como o Movimento Sem Terras, eles são importantes para democratizar a terra e ao mesmo tempo democratizar também os meios de produção do país, assim também diminuir a desigualdade que é tamanha aqui na nossa sociedade. O oh, uh, Jennifer, can I ask you a question? Quick. Absolutely. Is it okay if we kind of just do a kind of simultaneous tra translation as you've uh, said a couple of sentences and just uh, jump in because I think that I'm not going to be able to memorize everything that, you know, really want to do justice to everything. So, Absolutely, Fernando. Thank you. Is that okay? Juva. And Fernando, would you be able to provide a brief translation now for the audience? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, Juva. Só um segundo, Juva. Sim, sim, estou vendo. Ah, você me desculpa, mas você pode repetir mais ou menos o que você falou? Eu vou tentar traduzir simultaneamente porque eu estou tentando, eu estou tentando tipo é, lembrar tudo de uma forma concisa, mas acho que é tanta coisa que eu quero falar certo que que dá um pouco, dá mais difícil. Acho que fazendo essa forma simultânea fica mais legal, mais fiel. Né? Pode ser. Bom, como eu disse, a, a concentração da terra no Brasil ela está intimamente ligada ao processo de desenvolvimento do capitalismo aqui no país. So, Juvan said that uh, the concentration of land in Brazil is uh, intimately uh, connected to the uh, capitalist uh, process in Brazil. The diferente, process. diferente de países de economias centrais, ah, que fizeram a reforma agrária para desenvolver o capitalismo, o Brasil concentrou-se terra no seu processo de desenvolvimento do capital. Unlike, unlike countries of uh, central, uh, in, cent in South and Central America who used the landless reform to develop its capitalism, Brazil concentrated the lands into its own economy. Uh, movimentos como o Movimento Sem Terra são extremamente importantes na nossa sociedade porque questiona e luta pela democratização da terra, assim como pela democratização dos meios de produção e também pela diminuição dessa desigualdade que é tamanha aqui no país. Movimentos such as the Landless Workers Movement are crucial uh, to Brazil because they fight for the democratization of the land and the means of production. Uh, in, in Brazil, in, in countries such as Brazil. Uh, parece ser surreal 
as imagens que o chão traz de acampamentos, né? Mas são imagens do nosso dia a dia, são imagens reais e é essa a nossa realidade de, de luta social aqui. Those images you saw in the documentary about uh, the the camping, uh, the, the settlements, uh, may be surreal to you, but that's our reality. That's our experience on a daily basis. That's our daily uh, struggle in Brazil. Só para terminar, dizer que estamos extremamente ameaçados com as políticas do nosso desgoverno atual. Isso, Fernando. And uh, we're very threatened by the current policies of this uh, uh, the Jair Bolsonaro administration. For to wrap up, thanks, Juva. Uh, obrigado, Juva. Thank you. So we had a question uh, that perhaps we can start with Adriana and answering. It's a question from Janice, and it is: Why is the land reform in Brazil an issue of social justice outside of Brazil as well? Thank you, Janice, for the question. Um, I think um, like Jova and Camila pointed out, um, the struggle over land, it is, I think, a struggle to really dismantle what um, the, um, the reminiscence of slavery and, and colonialism, that now it's, it repackages under capitalism and modern slavery. Um, I think uh, in the case of my country in Bolivia, I can very relate uh, to the struggle of Brazil. And I can see these throughout Latin America and throughout uh, the America's continent. Um, in Bolivia, we have 25 families that are owners of the entire Bolivian territory. 67% um, of the Bolivians uh, population is indigenous population. So this means that the indigenous are slaves in their own territories by these big landlords. Um, the struggle of, of, of taking back the land, it is a struggle that has to do with food sovereignty. I really love how in the film Camila has portrayed all the uh, food production, but also with a framework of really not only food security, but food sovereignty. And also it is so tied up to environmental justice and racial justice. I think in different countries from India to Brazil, we can see the same struggle, the dispossession of land, but also the resistance that we can see throughout the globe. And certainly Brazil and the MST have been um, one of the most sophisticated, sophisticated ways of like reclaiming back because there is a whole social uh, project behind. There is a vision of a dream that inspires to all of us to dream, to have land, to have food sovereignty, to have what capitalism basically told us, you will never be able to have this. So daring to dream, daring to go against what capitalism uh, dictates that what you, you will, it will be your, your fate, your destiny. It is what the landless movement gave us back. Um, yet I can see um, how this takes a tremendous amount of not only organizing, but courage and also social awareness, but also um, an inner strength that I am so at awe when I see these families And um, because I cannot imagine how it is to be living under constant threat of um, an eviction, a dispossession, and this constant threat and fear, how that shapes your life. So that is the price to dream. That is the price to dare to what capitalist hegemony re regime uh, makes you think about yourself. So, um, Maybe this is a question for, 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 for Jova and Camila. How do the landless movement fuel themselves, their spirit to continue with their struggle? Um, and I ask these questions because I know there are many movements that are trying to do the same and, I, and are inspired by, by, by Brazil. Um, the only way that a movement can build up on the victories it is by looking at the lessons and at the victories of the previous one. So in that sense, I think it's amazing that we are watching this film and talking about um, what it takes 
to really uh, challenge capitalism and colonialism that is very much alive. Camila, did you want to respond to that question? I, I was going to ask if Fernando could translate a little, a little bit to Jovan uh, and, and also maybe that he could start because Adriana is asking about the movement, how the movement feels, and, and I guess Jovan is better placed to answer. Sure. Oi, Jovan. Uh, Adriana perguntou, a outra panelista perguntou como é que o movimento dos trabalhadores em terra se vê hoje uh, no Brasil em meio ao cenário político. Nós estamos vivendo um período bastante conturbado na história brasileira, né? não só para o MST, mas para qualquer iniciativa progressista que venha a ocorrer no país. Uh, he said, uh, uh, our movement is living uh, in a very troublesome uh, period in the Brazilian history, right? not, not only for the movement, but any other uh, movement in the, throughout the country. O MST assim como seus aliados a de esquerda continua promovendo suas ações suas lutas dentro das condições cabíveis né em função da pandemia mas sempre de pé fazendo o enfrentamento a todas as políticas de retiradas de direito promovidas pelo atual governo federal uh, the landless workers movement just like any leftist movement in Brazil are still uh doing uh still acting in, into the country but you know given the covid scenario it, it's something that's become limited right but they're uh, still doing their parts against the uh, policies of the current administration uh não está muito fácil pois esse governo com suas medidas a uh, digamos neo fascista tem facilitado grupos armados no campo para combater a luta social tem articulado o judiciário também para combater e perseguir militantes do movimento, ah, mas o MST continua fazendo seus acampamentos, a ocupações por hora em função da pandemia não é possível, mas seguimos de pé frente a todos os ataques promovidos aí pelo Bolsonaro. Ele uh, disse que é difícil porque... This uh, neo-fascist government of uh, Jair Bolsonaro has been uh, helping militarize uh, rural, rural big landowners and, uh, and also using the judiciary system in the country to uh, attack movements such as the landless workers movement, but they're still doing everything they can uh, within, of course, good reason because of uh, the pandemic, uh, it's, it's a struggle and uh, Yeah, just uh, keep keep them to from keep them from executing their uh, normal activities. Para finalizar, dizer que ah, nesse período de pandemia o MST tem se dedicado e jogado forças na produção de comida e em campanhas de solidariedade para com os trabalhadores urbanos que estão passando por necessidade. And uh, in, midst, in midst of this pandemic, the Landers Workers Movement has been focused, have focusing its actions on uh, producing food and uh, helping workers who are struggling at this time in Brazil. Workers and families who are, and families who are struggling at this time in Brazil. Thank you both. We have a question from the audience for Camila. And that is, how did you come to the MST? What drew you into the movement? Thank you for the question. Uh, I actually, I had uh, a very happy encounter with the MST of Goiás, uh, which was kind of a coincidence, but I don't really believe in coincidences. The thing is that I, I am from Goiás, uh, I am from Brasilia actually, and I grew up in Goiás in a region uh, where the movements made a very big, a major occupation in 2014. And my first short movie at the university uh, in 2003 uh, was about a peasant community that was dismantled 
by a very big landowner that des who decided to buy all the land possible and to press people out of their lands uh, with threats and a lot of pressure, things that are very common in Brazil, forcing people to flee the country, the country, the countryside. And so that 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 short film was made in 2002. And in 2014, when the MST uh, uh, of Goiás, uh, of which Juvan is part, occupied that same land, they they made a lot of research on the the history of that land. They bumped into the film and they, they contacted me to invite me to, to project the film, to screen the film at the occupation and to talk about it, to talk about the history. It's the place where I grew up. So I kind of saw the, I, I was a witness of this process. So unfortunately, so, so common of uh, a place which is peasants and family agriculture based to become only a very big monochromatic uh, one on a uh, sole farm, a uh, sole, uh, how can I say, a latifundium. And, and so we started our relationships on, uh, on based on that discussion on images. So it, it was very interesting because uh, all we were talking about was uh, our meeting point was images was a film and it was so fantastic what was happening there it was really a huge occupation with more than uh, in a very different moment of Brazil we were under a leftist government uh, which was not perfect at all uh, which didn't make uh, land reform as wished but with which the, the movement had more dialogue had more opening so uh, the movement was in a very effervescent and strong moment. And so I started to document that occupation, which is not the one we see in the film. Uh, I, I thought the film was going to be about that place, about that territory. And in the middle of the process, uh, in 2015, not in the middle of the process, but um, one year later, the, the, the occupation was dismantled. They were expelled from that place because it was a very, very powerful tar target. It was uh, the landowner was a very powerful politician, senator, and um, right after that we suffered the, the coup d'état, uh, which uh, resulted in Dilma Rousseff's uh, impeachment, and everything had to be rethought of. Uh, the movements uh, had to rethink its strategies and us uh, as a crew also had to rethink our strategies because the, the occupation where we started the film didn't exist anymore. And that's how we, we, we finished uh, meeting people going to Santa Elena to the south of the Eyes where the film takes place and meeting PC, grandma and all the militants who seen the film. Uh, but that was only in 2016 so we had been shooting, researching and shooting at the same time uh, for already two years when we arrived there and uh, establishing very, very strong bonds with the MST, uh, uh, for example, with Jouvin and other militants who were really accompanying us and making part of the process. Yeah, that's that's how. But uh, I, I could say also that in 2001, like I, when I was uh, a student, I was uh, already very interested in the movement, and I, I had a first opportunity to take part in a camp, in an encampment in Brasilia, and to try to make a film. So it was a first attempt that didn't really go uh, to the end, uh, that didn't really have a result. So uh, Sean was my second chance and hopefully we we managed to do something. Definitely did, thank you. So we have a question about what uh, can be done to support MST from outside of Brazil. And I'm wondering if we can start maybe with Fernando with that, because I know you've supported MST from a variety of spaces and locations. And then if others have uh, things to add, we can go from there. 
It's strange for me because uh, I guess can I stop? Can I start uh, telling how I view MST from within Brazil? Um, I guess from within the Brazil, Brazilian perspective, I'm not in Brazil right now. But uh, our constitution, actually, the Brazilian constitution of uh, 1988, reads that all lands should fulfill a social obligation, right? Which means that if the land is abandoned or the owner is zoning the federal government, uh, I think it legitimizes the the cause of the London's workers' movement. Uh, they're not, a, they're not, a, I think there's this campaign of disinformation uh, from that far right groups associated with the current administration have been promoting against groups like the MST movement that are uh, categorized as uh, terrorists or just people who are, uh, you know, are just doing this because they don't have, you know, I guess nothing better to do. Or, you know, and uh, truth is that nobody invades. Uh, occupy, uh, sorry, they use the word invade. Nobody occupy uh, a land because they want to, they do it because there is no alternative, right? And uh, I think both from Otim Brazil and Afar, the best way to fight it is information, I guess, uh, for you to be informed. And the documentary such as Camila's really uh, brings, uh, I guess, like creates the bridge between two Brazils, you know, when that uh, one Brazil that always has food on the table, which I was fortunate enough to grow up in, and the other Brazil that worked hard to put this food on people's table and yet still marginalized. So uh, I guess just information and um, yeah, just keeping up uh, with, uh, with news. And you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there, but there's a lot of good, good news outlets. Uh, that's what I try to do from afar. You know, obviously talking to my family, Directly and uh, yeah, does that answer your question? It's kind of like kind of went in a little tangent there, but uh, hopefully, the message you got across. Absolutely, Adriana, did you have anything to add? Sure. Um, well, um, I guess every movement uh, needs funding and resources. So if you are in a position to support with money, with funding, something very concrete, I know it's always welcome. But if you are not a philanthropic uh, officer uh, and are in the position to support with money, I think what Fernando said, it's one of the alternatives to educate people, to raise awareness about the importance of land and the dispossession of land and how that shapes and takes place in different parts of in different countries. Um, but also it's um, doing your part uh, in the way that makes sense and wherever you are, whether you are in Canada and you can see that, um, especially in British Columbia is an unceded territory, how land dispossession uh, it looks like in Canada. Um, what are the groups, indigenous groups that are supporting and how you can provide that support. Um, also um, migration. Most of migrant workers are displaced peasants from their original countries. So what kinds of rights or exclusions are um, submitted these migrant workers once they are in the country of origin? And mostly agriculture. I mean, I think through land and through food, we are all connected and we can all understand the different uh, impacts uh, of land dispossession, how that looks like. Uh, because I am in Mexico right now, in the land of the Zapatistas, the Zapatistas will say, do your part wherever you are. Organize in the country where you are, organize in the community where you are, because the landless movement is it, it, not a struggle that is only in Brazil. The more that we are um, out there to defeat, uh, to challenge, first of all, to name, right, to name uh, the oppressions, to name the injustices and to challenge and to organize to challenge injustices, we'll be supporting the MST as well. We're all on this together. So uh, that will be my, 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 my suggestion on how to support the MST. Camila, were you wanting to jump in? Uh, Jovan. Yeah, uh, I I would like to say, uh, to, to say to Juvan what Juvan said also. Uh, Juvan, uh, eles estão falando sobre, teve uma pergunta sobre como ajudar o MST de longe. É, acho que talvez você também possa falar sobre isso. E uh, I, I would like to just add that uh, what Fernando said in the beginning, and I also think 
uh, as Adriana said, when you're not in a position of uh, being a philanthropic officer or agent, uh, but you are a cultural agent or an artist or um, an educator, I, I think that uh, the lack of information is enormous in Brazil and outside of Brazil, of course. And that uh, feeds the, uh, the fascist projects, that feeds the, the far right projects. Uh, uh, when people are not well informed, they are more easily, uh, how can I say, free to, to that kind of discourse that disqualifies the struggle for land, that uh, labels uh, landless people as terrorists, or as bandits, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that has been going on in Brazil since the beginning, since before the landless workers movement exists, the, the, the mainstream media has always made a monster out of it. And uh, also as Fernando said, uh, it's in the constitution. We, every, everybody has the right to land. Everybody has the right to, to, to have a place to live, to have a place to, to work and to, to grow food. I mean, it's a basic right. So uh, it's, it, it's very important to, I think it's a way of helping uh, to talk about it, like what we're doing right now. Because uh, there, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of prejudice out of lack of awareness, lack of consciousness, uh, even in Brazil, especially in Brazil. And, and there are many people in the, the encampments who told me that before knowing the, the, the MST, were totally against it. Uh, there, there's a guy that marked my spirit, really. And he said that he used to throw stones at camps. Uh, when he passed like on the road, because there are many camps which are uh, on the roads, on the roads, like, uh, and he used to like say swear words and, and throw stones. <laughs> it's, uh, that, that goes to that point. So yeah, that's it. Talking about it in, a, in another way and providing other images, images that are not usually seen, and it's very important. But I guess Jovan will maybe have more concrete things to add. I was just going to ask uh, if Jovan had anything to add. Oi, Jovan. Uh... Repetindo a pergunta da Camila, é, como é que as pessoas podem ajudar o movimento dos trabalhadores sem terra de longe, fora do Brasil? Ok. Bom, o MST, desde a sua criação, ele sempre se preocupou muito com suas relações internacionais, tanto na perspectiva de ser solidário com outros povos, mas também de receber solidariedade de outros povos. Os since the uh, creation of the Ellenless Workers Movement, uh, the movement always were concerned about its re international relationships with other movements, uh, not in not only the sense of being so solidar uh, expressing solidarity towards those other movements, but also to receive them. Hoje, o MST tem brigadas de militantes em diversos países, na América, na África, na Ásia, Brigadas de apoio, de solidariedade, que ajudam povos de outros países, povos, principalmente, uma ligação com os camponeses. Uh, today, the Landless Workers Movement has... Um, I'm trying to... How can I say brigadas? Uh, Grupos. Solidarity uh, committees. Solidarity groups. Solidarity groups uh, in Asia, America, and uh, that help the movement uh, from afar. Ah, mas também temos grupos de amigos, grupos de apoios de outros países para com o MST. Então, chamamos de comitês de amigos do MST em outros países que fazem campanhas, que reúnem, que debatem a vida do movimento, que discute que fazem propostas e sugestões. 
they have groups uh, in other countries that uh, that also uh, help the landless workers movement and uh, discuss propositions uh, and ways to help the movement. That's from far. Aí no Canadá nós temos grupos de apoio, os comitês de apoio de canadenses para com o MST. Então, se possível, poderíamos trocar contatos e para que as pessoas que queiram participar, queiram contribuir com o movimento, possa fazer contato com esses comitês que tem aí, que existem aí no Canadá para que possam conversar. And even in Canada, uh, they have groups and communities that uh, support uh, the MST and directly in content with the, the movement. And uh, yeah, if uh, you like later to, I guess, exchange con uh, contacts um, to people who want to help the movement from afar in Canada. Thank you. We have another question from the audience. And I'm not sure who wants to put to ask this one, so you can give me a wave. But do you see a connection between MST and the Indian farmers' protests that are happening right now? Kesha Camila, do you see a connection between the MST and the Indian farmers' protests? So the large protests that are happening in India right now around land reform and farming. I'm, I'm, I'm not really able to talk about it. Indian farmers protests? Yes. So what, what, is there anybody else who wants to touch this one? We're talking about solidarity movements, so. <laughs> I, I am not very familiar with the nuances, the legalities, um, but I, I will say, of course, it is the same struggle. Um, the farmers, the Indian farmers are a source of inspiration. They're also challenging um, agrobusinesses. They are also challenging land dispossession. They are also challenging um, a brutal um, way of taking them away food sovereignty. Um, I do see um, a very uh, strong connection um, because also there is a matter of a class struggle and um, even a caste struggle in Brazil, I think, or in Latin America, we can see that racial and class struggle as well, um, that it's, um, um, these um, classes are um, really um, challenging the dispossession of, um, of, of uh, natural resources, and, but of course also sovereignty and dignity. And um, I, I will say they are very much connected I'm not sure if these um, Indian farmers are connected to the Via Campesina. I know MST is part of the Via Campesina, but I know it's a global movement uh, that is connected through the struggle of land. Thank you so much. Camila, did you want to ask? Jovan, you can ask Jovan, you know if the fazendeiros indianos, os protestos dos fazendeiros indianos tem uma conexão com o MST, era a pergunta, e se eles são ligados à Via Campesina? É, nós, o, os protestos na Índia é uma junção de várias organizações, mas também de ações espontâneas, né? às vezes sem organização específica. A O movimento tem relação com camponeses na Índia, esses camponeses que nós temos relação estão se envolvendo nas mobilizações, mas, digamos, ainda não são, o, não, não são os movimentos que estão dando o tom, que estão puxando as ações. São movimentos bastante, nesse primeiro momento, até mesmo espontâneos. Sim? Uh, he's saying that uh, the the uh, Landless Workers Movement uh, it has uh, some sort of connection with the the Indian Farmers Movement, but uh, those movements out there is still a very uh, sporadic and uh, is a combination of uh, different things. And 
there there's there isn't still anything more uh, concrete i guess to just make the connection make bridge the international bridge between these two movements thank you so much so we're nearing the end of time we have just a few more minutes left before we wrap up for the evening and i would like to invite the panelists to wrap up by thinking about our theme this year which is resistance freedom justice and how those relate to mst and the film in general. I'm wondering if we can start with you, Camila. Yeah. Um, what, what for me is uh, the most compelling thing about having made this film and being connected to that struggle and uh, uh, which reverberates in the theme of the, of the festival, freedom, resistance, Resistance freedom uh, for me uh, is a combination that also leads me to, to think that part of that freedom is uh, also what Adriana said, daring to dream, uh, daring to desire. Uh, that's uh, very important to me uh, in the film when people express their desires, their wishes, uh, the fact that they are, uh, they, they need things and they want things and they think of a future that maybe is not going to be theirs, but it's going to be there for uh, future generations, uh, like the, the, the character of grandma. So uh, for me, th this, this freedom is also in, in the field of ideas, in the field of, um, the fact that poor people in Brazil are not allowed to to wish, the uh, even humanitarian perspectives can be very subjudging, uh, in 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 a sense of just okay, workers need to to work, workers need to to eat, but I guess that's uh, that freedom and and that resistance is always is also going towards an emancipation of uh, people as human beings uh, having a fully accomplished life and with rights and with everything that they, that they deserve. I mean, so uh, uh, I guess that is, that is uh, connected to the idea of utopia, but a very concrete one, uh, a dream that's uh, ma makes itself concrete every day in the, in the, the everyday life and the everyday struggle. Yeah, that, that those are the relations I can think of at the moment. Thank you so much. Fernando, did you want to reflect? Well, I, okay, I'm uh, in the microphone. So. Uh, I guess in Camilo's documentary, it just kind of uh, brought me back to uh, a reality in Brazil that I was uh, disconnected uh, from by living afar. Uh, we are lucky that the internet democratized the uh, narrative, the uh, discussion of uh, many social issues that are important. But uh, watching the documentary kind of made me realize that, uh, you know, Bra Brazil, we're still very early on uh, into uh, a lot of uh, social uh, issues for people, meaning that uh, they don't have basic, basic human rights, such as the right for land, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, as I said earlier, uh, opening discussion is important. And I think in that sense, uh, Camila and Yuvan's contribution, uh, it's, it's amazing. Really appreciative of this. Thanks, Fernando. Would you ask the question to Jivan as well, please? Oh, Juva, só para ela pediu para meio que sintetizar o resumir o tema com do do festival de justiça social e tal com o documentário meio que uma para encerrar assim. Um comentário geral. Sobre solidariedade, justiça social e a relação disso com o... Fazer uma reflexão disso com o documentário da Camila e o Movimento de Salvador de Sintar. Sobre o tema do festival mesmo, né? Que é, é liberdade, resistência e qual é a terceira palavra? 
e solidariedade? Era isso? Justiça. 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 Liberdade, resistência e justiça. Né? O tema do festival, né? ela pediu para fazer umas reflexões sobre isso e, e o filme. Ok. Bom, em tempos de tantas ofensivas do capital, onde cada vez mais a desigualdade mundial vem aumentando, a pobreza mundial vem aumentando, espaços como este do festival que discute temas tão importantes são cada vez mais necessários. Uh, em tempos... Uh... <risos> In times that uh, which inequality has been uh, on the rise, spaces such as the, the, the ones that the festival provides are very important uh, to keep the discussion going about social issues, very important. O, o chão também traz elementos muito fortes nesse sentido da, da busca da diminuição da desigualdade social, da busca da justiça social, da democratização da terra. Ah, é uma luta bastante complexa, mas bastante necessária a democratizar a terra no nosso país e, com isso, óbvio, a diminuir toda essa desigualdade social que aqui vivemos. Uh... The shown uh, Landless Show documentary uh, brings awareness to social inequality and the demo democratization of land in Brazil, which is a uh, yeah, it's, it's important topic and very uh, present uh, to have. Ter, ter a nossa luta, a luta dos sem terras, uh, de forma de, de um filme assim, com tanta sensibilidade como o chão e ter o chão a sendo assistido por várias pessoas em várias partes do mundo para nós é extremamente importante e necessário como forma de divulgação de toda a nossa luta que a gente vive aqui. Having uh, the opportunity to uh, see the show as a documentary to be uh, streamed and viewed for pe from people all over the world is very important uh, for uh, us in the Landless Workers Movement to, uh, uh, to raise our, our awareness to our, uh, to our cause. Por fim, dizer que o chão é exatamente o que a gente vive no dia a dia dos nossos acampamentos. Tanto a Camila como toda a sua equipe conseguiu, de forma muito sensível, captar a essência e a beleza da luta pela terra no Brasil. O show documentary é o que vemos todos os dias em nossos campos. E o documentário de Camila foi capaz de capturar a essência do nosso daily struggle very accurately. Thank you so much. Adriana, do you want to bring it home with some thoughts on resistance, freedom, and justice? Sure. Um, I always invoke uh, Bob Marlin when he says, no one but ourselves can free our minds, uh, but no one can do it alone. We have to do it in collective. We have to do it in community. And I think with the pandemic, I think it is first time that the entire planet, it is realizing that no one is free, no one is safe until everyone is safe and everyone is free. I think if there is one lesson that we really have to take with us from the pandemic is this one. So that points out um, to solidarity. And sometimes in the global north, we see solidarity as something nice, novel to do. But when we go to the global south, we see that solidarity, it's a mode of living. It is a way of living. It is a concrete practice. And it's not a nice concept. It is a mother of survival. And it is a mother of a strategy to keep us together. What the MST shows us and what the film show us in a beautiful way is exactly that, that there is a strong sense of doing this together uh, because there is no other way to go about. The powers that we confront are so huge 
but the dreams that we can hold and the ways that we can build and create communities of support of the struggle and resistance is what really keeps us alive. And that is what is going to defeat uh, the systems that oppress us in so many different ways. That's why I'm wearing this um, green uh, paliacate from the struggle of the women in Latin America for abortion, because also it is about resisting in so many multiple ways with our own bodies and with the land. So what I take away from the MST, it's really like bringing back um, the real, um, the real um, practice of how it is to struggle and to resist together, to free ourselves together. And thank you, uh, MST, for always um, giving, giving um, offering that to the rest of the Latin American countries. As I said, I've been inspired since I was a teenager and also joined in solidarity with the landless movement in Bolivia. We face a similar struggle everywhere. Thank you so much. We are now at time, unfortunately. I'm sorry we weren't able to get to all of the questions, but thank you to the audience for your active participation. And of course, thank you so much to our wonderful panelists. Uh, I'll clap for you. I'm sure people are clapping in their homes as well as they're watching. So thank you, Fernando, Camila, Jivan, and Adriana. And thank you to Fernando and Camila for um, translating as well. So greatly appreciated. I hope that uh, the audience has enjoyed the panel tonight and that you continue to enjoy KDOCs throughout the week. Thank you all for joining this community tonight to have this important conversation. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you, Jennifer, for your moderation. Thank you, Janice, for inviting me to the panel. <laughs> Fernando, Camila, and Jovan. Organizers. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Uh, obrigado, Juva. Uh, mucho gusto, Adriana. Igualmente, a luta continua. <laughs> Siempre. Eso. Thank you very much for, for the selection, for the, the space. Uh, it's really been a pleasure. I'm very happy to be in Canada right now, <laughs> even if it's 2 a.m. in Brazil. <laughs> We're delighted to have you. Thank you all so much. Have a good night.